All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. Today's topic, we're going to do a wood turning from the beginning all the way to the end pretty much. So what I have here is I have a Forestner bit. That's about one inch because my spur drive that I'm going to use is one inch also. And so after I find the center and I drill down just a little ways, then I'll put my spur drive right in here, pound it in with a hammer. All right, got it mounted up between centers. Move my tool rest in. Let's spin this by hand. It's kind of close. And we're pretty decent there. And I'm going to use my roughing gouge. And I'm going to rough this down into almost a cylinder. And then I'll be back with you. Okay, so what I've done now is I made it a cylinder. I put a tenon on this end and a tenon on this end. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut this off. This piece right here will become a top for a box and we'll make a box out of what's left. So to do that, I just use a parting tool and I take a look at the wood grain. I decide where do I want to cut this off because I can make a decorative little top. So maybe somewhere right in here. Okay, and I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to cut it off now and then I'm going to take it out of the spur drive and I'm going to put it on my large chuck jaws. I'll show you that in a minute and I'll be back. Let me go ahead and get this cut off. Okay, so this was on there like that and I stopped it and I went ahead and I used just a handsaw and I cut through the last little tiny bit, twisted it off. So this now is the top. We'll do that in a little while. This over here, I'm going to go ahead and mount into my chuck, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, now we're at a point where I'm going to do the outside. I'm going to shape the outside. Then I'll come back around like I did in the previous video. I'll drill a hole to the depth that I want, mark it, we'll start hollowing. But for right now, we'll figure out how we want to do this part. I'm using a large round nose scraper. I wanted to try something different rather than the gouge and the carbide, so it seems to be working pretty good. It's got real pretty, uh, you know, grain in here, so um, I might bring this down. I want to stay below that knot to give it some decoration. A little bit of tear out right here. So I think we'll take the diameter of this down and see if I can get rid of that tear out. And I said tear out, but uh, it's, it's a crack. So let's see how deep it goes. Ah, pretty darn close. I hate to go down any more. Um, let's see if I can shape this a little bit. Maybe we'll make something decorative here. Let's see. All right, this should turn out pretty nice. I'll bring it down just a little bit more, I think. Yeah, that, there's the knot right there, so. I got my indexing tool here with a high speed, it's about a 3 16 bit on there, nice and sharp, and I'll start to hollow this out. Okay, so where we are now is I went ahead and I finished hollowing this out. Now. I hogged out most all of that wood and to make my final cut I went slow and what I was using is I was using my carbide tool right here and then I would just come down through here like this and I would check the wall thickness periodically until I got it. That's about an eighth of an inch I would say. Then I came back and I figured okay the depth Again, I use my depth gauge, my homemade one that I, I showed you before in previous videos. It's a 2x2 two two with a dowel in it. And I put it in here. That's where it hits the top. I bring it up. And I know my bottom is right here. So I've got a little bit of room to play with. So I'm going to mark that real quick. Thank you. 
Now I'm going to mark how this sits in the chuck because I'm going to take this off. Then we're going to do the top and we're going to put them back together and make them match up, I hope. Um, just as an idea this morning, thought we would try it. Okay, so this tells me I marked here number three. So these marks tell me where the jaws for number three fit in and I should get this fairly well aligned. So right now I'm going to switch this over, take this off, and I'm going to put on the, the wood for uh, making the top. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in through here and I want to get the correct diameter for here. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to use those calipers that I told you about in a previous video. Uh, you know, I got links below. Some of this is even cheaper than Harbor Freight on Amazon. Sometimes it's not, but this right here is going to tell me, you know, how the diameter of what I want right there. And then I lock it in. And then I'll start to take this down until this just fits over it. And then I'll be right back. Okay, and we are right there. That should do it. Now to double check, of course, I just bring up this. And look at that. It's a nice fit. Okay, so now we'll remount this, put the lid on there, and let's see if we can make a nice lid. Start working on that lid. The hard part is, in order to work on this, it's going to want to take this and throw it off. Now you can do a couple of things here. The first thing is get some shop towels. That one layer might work. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. But I still don't want it to come flying off on me, so I'll try one more thing. decent fit here and now we're going to sand it and it should look okay so okay so I power sanded now with the 150 just like this so I've got it up to 150 the paper towel is holding it on there pretty nice and tight so I'm not worried about this coming off and I usually will apply the pressure this way um, I could do it this way some but like right now it's on there nice and tight so that's 150. We'll go ahead and get it wet. Raise the grain just like we did in previous videos. Also kind of gives you an idea of how it's going to turn out with a clear finish. I'm going to let that dry. I'll be back with you. Then we're going to go from 150 to 220. Okay, so this is kind of bland looking really. And I was thinking we could try something a little bit different with this. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some dyes. Now you can use aniline dyes. You can buy those online. Mix them with water, alcohol, and it's a dye. And you can dye your wood that way. Or you can use trans tint. Okay, so I sanded this to 320. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm first going to coat this with black. So here I got my black. And I got an old rag. Or a rag. Or a shop towel. Turn the lathe on slow. And I'm going to let that dry. Probably 10 or 15 minutes and I'll be back with you. Okay, so now it's dry. So now I'm going to take at 320 and I'm going to start sanding this and I'll show you. 
Okay, so I'm gonna blow it off. I've been sanding on it just a little bit and got a lot of that black off, not all of it. I left it a little darker down here towards the bottom just to give it a little bit of character when it transitions to the bottom. The rest of this, I've got sanded fairly well. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put on red dye. I'm going to stop it and I'm going to rub it with the grain just like this. Now we're going to leave that alone, let that dry and I'll be back with you. Okay, again time's gone by, it's dry and now I'm going to use that same 320. I'm going to sand it but not as much as I did last time. Okay, so I did that for just a little bit and then I stopped it. Now I'm going to sand with the grain. I'm going to blow it off real good. Now that was with 320. Now I'm going to put yellow on there. And just before I do, I'm going to sand this with 400. There goes the 400. You don't need to spend that much time. And again with the grain real quick. Now I'm going to apply yellow. Wow, that gives it a really nice color right there. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll go from there. I'll be back with you. Okay, now with a semi-gloss gloss finish, that's what it'll look like. I think it turned out pretty good. It was bland, kind of a whitish kind of a wood. We applied those stains just like I showed you and sanded with the grain between the grits. And then I started applying the black and then I sanded it down, went with the grain, blew it off, sanded again after I applied the red and then sanded with the grain, did the same thing again. And this is with the yellow. Now I don't do anything after the yellow, it's done. I might, if I have to denib it at all, I might run over it lightly with like 4 out steel wool or that 3M scotch Bright pad, the gray. Like I said in previous videos, it's about a grit of 4 to 600, but I'll decide that at the time, but it's your choice now after you part this off or while it's on the lathe. Do you, how do you want to finish this? Do you want to put an oil finish over it? It's going to lift some of the, uh, the dye, so you're probably better off with some kind of a film finish or you can apply wax and you can buff it real good. Now that's one option. I'll wait and see how this turns out. The other one is to use wipe on poly and just uh, put your two seal coats on from Zinsser. Uh, like I said, all the links are below. I usually put two coats on. Then I kind of denub it, like I said, with the 3M pads. Then I go ahead and I start building up my coats of poly. And it could be four, five, six. I just keep applying it and denibbing it and looking at it until I get it to the sheen that I want. Okay, All right, so, so what I think is I am going to put the two coats, the seal coats on here now, and then I'll denib it if I have to. But I'm going to put two seal coats, then I'm going to switch over to wipe on poly because this is going to look a lot better with like a semi-gloss to a gloss kind of a finish. So. I pulled the lid up just a little bit. I don't want it to get stuck from the product that I'm going to use and glued on there. So, And I don't want to have to pry it off of the screwdriver. So I loosened it up and I'll make my lathe speed real slow when I do this because I want to use the lathe to apply the finish. Okay, this is the first coat of the sanding sealer. So this one should dry very quickly, so I'll let you know and I'll be back with you in just a little bit. 
You saw earlier that busted off when I was trying to make that top, that finial. So it's a good thing I had extra wood on here. I was able to make another top. Look at it like a design opportunity, I suppose, right? Either that or designer firewood pile. One or the other. Okay, so what I did is I put the second coat, seal coat, on here. And now when this dries, like I said, with the 3M pad, I'll make sure it's denibbed. Then I'll start putting wipe-on coats of poly the same way until I get the look that I want. Part it off, finish the bottom, and it's done. Alright, so that's it for this one. Another one on the books, and this gives you an idea that you can use different colors. And if you look at a color wheel, it'll give you an idea of the combinations that you can do. But this turned out really nice compared to what it was, and you know, I'm happy with it. Alright, All right. so look, I hope you click subscribe, keep following me. I am the Home Handyman. I'll see you folks again on the next video. If you like these, Drop me a comment, let me know, I'll keep making them, and I will teach and kind of play around with different finishes and ideas that I've done before in the past. Um, so this is one of them, um, anyway, using dyes. I prefer the trans tint over the aniline, but there's nothing wrong with the aniline dyes. It also works just as well. You can mix them with alcohol too, which is generally what I do because the alcohol evaporates but you have to work with it very quickly also. Um, you can correct it and you know it's a learning curve but the water gives you a little bit more time if you're not in a rush you just put it on there let it dry if you want to go faster like I said you can always mix it with some alcohol. Okay I'll see you on the next video you folks have a great day bye bye.